were some of the most exquisite ornamental handicrafts in the world. But Emperor Qianlong's secret retreat in the Forbidden City has fallen into disrepair. With many of the crafts used lost to history, how are these buildings to be restored? Where are the rare and precious materials needed now to be found? How many secrets remain hidden in Qianlong's private residence? In the spring of 2007, the restoration of the Emperor's Lodge is entering its final phase. The murals and fabrics have been restored or replicated. The next challenge for the project team is to finish restoring the interior woodwork and decorative features. The restoration work on the wooden screens started six months earlier in order to get it completed before the installation of the fragile embroidery. The wooden screens belong to a style of Han Chinese interior design favored by the Manchu Emperor Qianlong. Breaking up the room layout, they create a profound sense of space. Artisan skills such as fine bamboo marquetry and inner bamboo carving belong to another age. Can the craftsmen be found to replicate them in the 21st century? Wang Qi Wei, an expert in the restoration of historical buildings, is in overall charge of the project. The three most important materials for restoring the interior wooden decorations are wood, bamboo and jade. Because of its rarity, the jade is the most challenging material to replace. Chenlong's favorite was fine hotel jade. This jade dish is kept in the palace museum. Carved in the center of the dish is a poem. It recalls the emperor's campaign in 1755, which destroyed the Sunha Khanate and brought Xinjiang under Qing control. This secured the trade routes to Hotan, and the imperial household were able to monopolize the mining, manufacturing, and transportation of jade from there. Mount Kunlun sits 5,000 meters above sea level. The vast majority of Hotan jade is here, hidden deep in the rock. For most of the year, it is covered by snow. During the thaw in June and July, torrents of water sweep the rocks from the mountainside, which are carried down to the rivers below. Only the hardest pieces of jade survive this journey. Chen Lung ordered his craftsmen to produce piece after piece made from the finest jade in all manner of designs. Their work represents the absolute pinnacle of the art. In 1767, 79 pieces of Hotan jade were recorded on the spring tribute list to the emperor. At that time, upwards of 2,000 kilograms of the material was being sent to Beijing annually, the most recorded being 5,000 kilograms. With such intensive mining, pure Hotan jade had already become a rarity by the end of the Qing dynasty. Most important to the restoration team is to locate the right kind of jade. 
Jung Tia Chung and his team are chosen both for their skills and for their access to Hotan Jade of the right quality. They get on with the job and finish the first batch within a month. But to Jung's surprise, the restoration experts believe the carving style differs significantly from the original. Why did the project experts reject the work of Zhang and his craftsmen? Zhang goes over the production process again and again. As a working material, jade must be slowly abraded rather than carved directly. It can take hundreds of hours to finish a piece. Jade craftsmen have to be both patient and focused in the extreme. And when they worked for the emperor, they had to stick to one style, and one style only. Modern jade craftsmen, however, produce a work based on their own aesthetic values. Even with the same drawings to work from, two artists will always produce differing results. The Forbidden City Restoration Project requires something much more conservative. Jung's contemporary creative strengths are now a weakness. Jung decides to recruit experienced technicians to do tracings of all the original jade work. Enter the voice of experience. Yang Ye Ru is the senior jade worker in Jung's team. Yang closely studies the original jade carvings, works out the techniques used, and imparts them to the other craftsmen. Six months go by. The jade ornaments they work on are getting closer and closer to the Chen Lung style. By early 2008, the restoration of the lower parts of the wooden screens is well underway. The craftsmen have to rediscover a technique lost for over two centuries and make sure the restored parts look identical to the old ones. He Fuli is from Dongyang in Zhejiang province. He is a bamboo craftsman with over 50 years experience. Although he has never practiced inner bamboo carving himself, he has seen it done by his his predecessors. In his workshop in Dunyang, He Fu Li is working on newly harvested bamboo stalks. With his immense experience, He believes he can bring the carving techniques back to life for the restoration. However, the first samples sent to Beijing start to crack not long after their arrival. 
The bamboo, boiled at the correct humidity level for Zhejiang, is unable to cope with Beijing's dry air. So He decides to come to Beijing himself. He Fu Li and his son are now faced with the restoration of over 100 square meters of inner bamboo carving. His son is also a highly skilled craftsman, but when it comes to the gluing, he will need his father's experience. Fish mold glue was used by traditional craftsmen. It's a natural glue made from the bladders of ocean fish. It has no artificially synthesized chemicals, but its adhesiveness is still far stronger than modern glues. The finished bamboo carvings are glued onto the pre-prepared wood. The texture of the bamboo makes the bird's feathers even more vivid. There is a great amount of lattice style paneling in the west wing of the lodge. Chen Lung was very fond of bamboo. In order to avoid it cracking in the dry northern air, the emperor ordered the craftsmen to use wood, but to maintain the appearance of bamboo. Naked flames are prohibited inside the Forbidden City, but He Fu Li needs to heat his bamboo to achieve the correct color. He devises a plan to match the 200-year-old colors by cooking the bamboo in an electric rice cooker. July is Beijing's hottest month. He and his son work indoors without a rest and without air conditioning. Within two months, the new bamboo carvings, along with the newly restored originals, are all returned to their rightful places. While He Fu Li finishes his work, another team works on the missing parts of the wooden screens. Thanks to the skilled craftsman, Chen Long's great masterpiece is close to returning to its former brilliance. All they now await are the jade inlays from Zheng Tie Chang. Progress is far from smooth. 
Having spent six months testing different styles of carving, he is now faced with a shortage of the actual jade itself. These days, Hotan jade is virtually priceless. Jung desperately tries to source more jade for the project, but all he has found thus far are small pieces. The restoration needs the highest quality of Hotan jade, and it needs it now. Then news comes in that the old warehouse of the Beijing Jade Factory is to be demolished. 我们听了这个消息以后呢，赶紧派工人去那儿，就在他那个库底的翻，拿就开始准备是挖那个库，那底下经过几十年以后，他那存了很多余料。The warehouse was established in the 1950s. No one knows exactly how much jade was stored there. Zhang Tiacheng starts sorting through the jade piece by piece in the dark. Can he find what he is looking for? After a month of searching, Zhang finally finds something. By the November of 2008, Zhang's team has finished almost a thousand jade ornaments. They have also resurrected jade carving techniques lost since the 18th century. Inlays of jade along with wood carvings were popular decoration for furniture and interiors during the Qing dynasty. It is rare though to see them used on such an extravagant scale. In all, the residence contains more than 30 decorative boards and ceiling panels and 60 carved wooden screens. Amazingly, two centuries later, the restoration experts have managed to source the same type of materials. With these, they can recreate the patterns and colors to complete this giant jigsaw puzzle. Years of work has come to final fruition. The maker of the mulberry backing paper, Yu Yifu, travels to Beijing from his mountain village. It is the first time he has visited the Forbidden City. Nanjing clad brocade embroiderers Zhang Kaicheng and Zhang Rongxiang are also getting ready to see their work in its new home. The glories of Zhuangjin Jai was once the exclusive pleasure of the emperor. Now this privilege is extended to the craftspeople whose work created them. Mr. Yu, of course, must use his imagination to see his handiwork because the paper he made is now the backing to the restored murals. <laughs> <laughs> 
Six years have passed since the restoration first began. What was once the Empress' private retreat is now open for everyone to enjoy. Chen Lung created his dream home, a space full of art, where he could escape from the pressures of political life. But it only ever remained his dream. In fact, Chen Lung never spent a day in the residence that he built. His death in 1799, at the age of 88, marks the end of a glorious era for Chinese art. Traditional Chinese artisanship and modern technology from the West have come together to restore one of the world's great masterpieces of interior design. The results are stunning. Chen 哎,我原本很很脏,但是现在我经过我的处理,对,展现原本面貌了,可能是一部分。As one of the project managers of the Chen Lung Garden Restoration, Wen Shi Wei now plans to employ these new approaches for the restoration of the rest of the Emperor's secret garden.这是科技工作的这几年贯穿的一个始终的一个职。